really have come from uh, some conversations with Robert Grant in the past, who found you know also this correlation of this 137.5 degrees, which is considered to be like the phi rotation angle. And so for those who are not familiar with that, if you take the 360 degrees of a circle and you divide it by the phi ratio, you basically can get two degree uh, angles. You can get 222.5, um, and you can get the 137.5. And that 137.5, 137 is um, the ratio of what's called the fine structure constant. And so there's an interesting, very close correlation here that um, if you would just allow yourself to, to see it as a valid correlation, it opens up an interesting inquiry into what that may be. Now, I'm not deep in, I'm not a deep physicist, studied physicist, so my familiarity with the, the the kind of more deeper nature of the fine structure constant is limited. But what I understand is that it is um, a relationship of the energy. This is the way I understand it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> the energy kind of the throughput of the um, radiation and absorption of light, at least in the context of what we're talking about here with the phi ratio, this is how I kind of see it. Um, so that at this, at this um, atomic level, there is a, um, a ratio relationship, energy level relationship that has to do with how light is absorbed and reflected given the different, what I would say, geometric qualities of atomic structures and molecules. And, um, and so we have this this kind of a, um, a, a fundamental uh, ratio of what is being radiated and absorbed in, in different contexts, depending on the atomic structures, but that this, this uh, fine structure constant is directly related to how that is actually functioning. And in, Considering it in relationship then to the golden ratio, the golden angle of 135, 137.5 degrees, this is how phi works in the universe. See, the, the, what I learned when I was doing the research for my book, and I read uh, the book called Interference by Richard Merrick, and I, I was astounded. <laughs> he, he answered one of the biggest questions I had is, what is the role that this golden ratio of phi is actually playing in the universe? Because it's everywhere, it has a role. It's not just a mathematical thing that's fascinating. It's actually a functional aspect of how the universe is organizing itself. And, um, and he illuminated that the, the, the functional role of the phi ratio is, is basically two things that are complementary. One is to take frequencies of any system that is coming into coherence or resonance and um, to basically take the, and, and the way that resonance and harmonics work is that it's in whole number ratios, the musical harmonic structures, two to one, three to one, four to one, five to one, and the musical ratios are whole number ratios, the intervals. And um, so, in order to have that kind of coherence, you need to remove the frequencies that are not in whole number ratio relationship. Otherwise you get too much chaos and static and interference that will disable the coherence of that system. And um, so the phi ratio uh, creates what Merritt calls phi damping wells, which basically allow over a certain, um, now this is, I have to, to bring it into a correlation to the Fibonacci sequence, which is the series of numbers that um, are very well known, starting from one plus one equals two, one plus two equals three, two plus three equals five, three plus five equals eight, ongoing out into infinity. And so you can go up to these very large numbers in this sequence. And the farther you go out the sequence, 
each of the pairs of numbers, actually, when you divide each pair, they, they resolve closer and closer to the phi, the, the irrational infinite number of mathematical phi. They resolve closer and closer to it, but they never actually get there. So you can imagine that when a system needs to come into coherence to resonate, frequencies that are not in whole number ratio need to be removed. And Merrick said that there, there are these phi damping wells that basically use the Fibonacci frequency ratio to capture what are called enharmonic frequencies. And basically kind of convert them back down, back to the zero point, to basically silence them out, to damp them back down to nothing. And then over a certain threshold, it then allows and creates the resonance to occur. So you can have a vibrating note, for example, or a form in nature, for example. And so there's this the damping and resonance relationship that is you know, the interplay going on at all times in the universe. And so I really feel that, that um, the fine structure constant is actually a threshold of that dynamic happening where you either get damping, which is absorption, in order to have like resonating atomic structure uh, that then is putting out certain frequencies that we can see as visible light or other electromagnetic frequencies. Um, you need to be able to remove certain aspects of the electromagnetic spectrum in order for that to occur. And it appears to be, if this is in fact the role that nature's, that uh, the phi ratio is playing in nature, and that this angle of 137.5 and the fine structure constant being so similar, it could be that it's actually that way because it's playing the same role. And that being a, being a ratio of phi, it's showing us that the exact same dynamic is at play of, of damping and absorbing and then resonating and radiating at the same time.